you can't even do it in the kitchen or the living room in your parents' house. You got to do it from the bedroom where you sleep every day. And you make $130,000 yeah. in one month. Welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. Podcast, America's number one podcast for new real estate investors, where we know that finding discounted properties is the most proven path to financial freedom. I am your host, Brent Daniels, Mr. TTP, and I am telling you, if I can do it, so can you. And let's start with a little thought here. Do you know what the difference is between the big shots in this business and the little shots? I'll tell you what the difference is. The big shots are just little shots that kept shooting. That's all it is. It is perseverance. And I wanted to look this up because I wanted to understand what, what, what exactly is perseverance. Perseverance, by definition, is persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. And that leads me beautifully, perfectly, smoothly into this fantastic interview that I have on the podcast show today because I'm talking to someone here that had to go 10 months, 10 over 300 days before getting a deal. Somebody that was just so focused and so committed to his business. And then all of a sudden things started popping, things started going. And now he's doing gigantic, massive deals in Columbia, Maryland. It is my pleasure to introduce Fade Aromo Laran. How are you? Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? Thank you, man. You got it right. Oh, right. <laughs> well, well, good. Well, I'm excited to have you on here because, you know, the, the post that you, you, you posted to our, our TTP family group and uh, that you texted me, it was so inspirational. It had so much impact. And it was just a story that I think needs to be heard because I think everybody thinks, well, I'll get into this and I can get it done in 30 days like that interview I heard before. Or I'm going to get it the first the uh, person that calls me, I'm going to get a deal, but it doesn't always end up that way. So I want to really peel back all the layers and find out how and why you stuck with this business. So give us a little background on you. Tell us what your life was like before you discovered wholesaling real estate. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm 23. I, I, I just graduated from University of Maryland um, in December 2018. Um, I found out actually about wholesaling, uh, I want to say the summer prior, because I went to a Damon John. I've always kind of been into like kind of forward thinking and entrepreneurship. And like I used to trade stocks and like flip shoes. And like I even got to a point where I was flipping calculators, like because uh, <laughs> yeah. there was arbitrage there. Um, so like I've, I've, I've always kind of been into like turning one dollar to two. And uh, I went to a Damon John talk and one of his opening speakers, Damon John is like the Shark Tank guy, the bold yeah. like Shark Tank, yeah. Um, and uh, he had a, uh, a, a talk, he had a meeting here in Maryland. One of his opening speakers was talking about real estate and just different ways of getting into it. And uh, they were talking about no credit, no money down options of getting into real estate. I was like, no, it's not possible. <laughs> How do you get into real estate with nothing, no skin, um, no skin in the game? And... Uh, and uh, but at the same time, I know that I don't always know what I don't know. Right. So like I was I was I was curious and I was listening and I was like, OK, let me figure out what this is. Ended up really diving deep into YouTube University and like really getting to the bottom of it. And um, but I was still I was a bioengineer back in college. So I was still going through school and finishing up my last semester. And um and uh, so I couldn't dedicate too much time to it, but I told myself right before I graduated that I, when I graduate, I'm not applying to anything. I'm not doing any, like I'm moving back into my house and literally just going to make it in wholesaling. I know it's possible, so I know I'm just going to do it. And uh, that's when I came in contact with you guys, with uh, with Wholesaling Inc. Um, I was listening to podcasts back in college, even like during that period, but I really dove deep into Wholesaling Inc., met the um uh got in contact with the ttp stuff it was just financially um worth it to uh cold call so i was like okay who do i learn cold calling from like how do i how do i do this and obviously your name came up and i was like okay I'm, am i gonna make i had fifteen thousand dollars saved up from an internship that I, I did 
um, a couple years prior. So I was like, okay, how do I put this money to the best use so I can, um, I can, I can learn. And I was like, okay, I'm going to make this commitment. Um, did that learn like a lot, a lot about cold calling and finally felt comfortable, but still after trial, 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 it took me months and months and months to get my first one. And, um, so that was December 18. I got my first one end of September. Um, and I was literally just like, I got through many dips and many trials and like almost getting there, but not just yet. And, um, and mind you, I, I was just living off of the savings and part sure. of it was education. I didn't have any, any income. I wasn't working anywhere. Um, so I was really just learning the business and just living at home and just keeping my expenses low. And then I got the first deal. Then it started rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. Um, then COVID hit and I kind of hit like a dry, uh, COVID hit. I partnered up with somebody and that partnership fell through in March. And I also decided to switch from out of Baltimore to PG County. So all the follow-ups I had, I just trashed all the leads and started up fresh. So I had a dry period of maybe about like three months or so sure. and come like June, July, August, they've just been rolling in. And then I just hit my last, the, the. The really big month recently. Let's not talk about it yet. Let's not talk about it yet. Let's wait. Let's let's lead lead, lead in with some suspense here because it is a huge month and a, and a huge deal. A few of them actually. And uh, but so you're 22 years old. You get out of college and what you are you are you living with your parents or you're in an apartment? Like what? Where are you making these calls from? I mean, are you you're not in an office, right? You're working for yourself. Where, where are you making these calls specifically? What like, like is it in a kitchen? Is it a living room? Where are you making calls? So I, I started from uh, the living room downstairs. My dad was like, uh, I can hear you from the, the basement. Like, like <laughs> you gotta you gotta go up to your room. So like now I'm in my room and I make all my calls out of here. And uh, and uh, yeah, it's been working. But how is that? I mean, you you, you sleep in your room, room. You're doing it like you, know, you have these goals, you have these dreams, you have all these things going through your head. Does it is or do you just get past it and just stick focused on the work, or is it driving you crazy to be inside your room all day long making calls and then sleeping there as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's literally like. Uh, um, it's like a cycle almost where like the the same thing that I kind of hate like about like the position I'm in right now is the same thing that's like driving me to keep going. And it's yeah. like, OK, like I know people are making checks out, out here and like I know that this can take care of my family. I just have to keep on making these calls to get out of this position. And because I've kind of put my back up against the wall, I really have no options. I, I, I didn't apply for a job on the side or anything. Um, and I missed the whole uh, hiring cycle. Um, I, I, I mean, I had to cold call. Yeah. <laughs> like that's the position I purposely put myself in, so like I could make it work. I yeah. love it. And the beautiful thing is, you were smart enough to be 22 years old with 15 grand that you had saved up and not go. You know what? I'm going to throw this all into marketing and hope something happens. You're like, no, 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 no. I'm going to keep. I'm. I'm going to keep a lot of this money and I'm going to make more. I'm going to bring these deals in based on my efforts, not based on my marketing. I'm going to prospect for these opportunities. I'm not going to just go out there and send advertisements out. And I think that that's a really smart, especially for anybody listening or watching to this that doesn't have a huge budget. You can trade your talents, your skills, your voice for the, the big bank account that you would need to be marketing to have people call you. Remember, when we look at this business, there's only three ways to generate leads. One is to wait for them, try to get referrals from the people that you know. Two is to buy them through traditional marketing, direct mail or pay-per-click or internet leads. And three is to go out and earn them. And those two main ways are to go out and, and knock on doors or to pick up the phone and make the calls and, and really prospect and, and try to have quality conversations with distressed property owners as often as you can. The fact is, that's what this business comes down to. It's the it is the heart. It is the foundation. It is the key to this business. Is consistent quality conversations with distressed property owners. But when you start, Fade, how did you feel? You you had never had a conversation with the distressed property owner. How was that? And how how did you feel comfortable with that? And um, and, and walk us through that process. 
Yeah, it, it, it's crazy because you guys talk about these things all the time, right? And and for somebody that's never really heard it before, you don't necessarily know what to look out for, right? You're just going, kind of going in blind and hoping that you get in contact with one of these people that a deal comes from. And then you think back and you're like, oh, that was a motivated sell. That's exactly who they were talking about. But like, if you've never really completed a deal, you don't really have that proof of concept. You're kind of just shooting blanks, right? But over time, you get in contact with different types of sellers and just intuitively you can gauge kind of motivation. And my process throughout that time was just kind of like learning different types of people and learning who you're going to get business from, who you're never going to get business from, and like learning all those kind of like softer skills. Yep. And part of me is like grateful that it took me so long because it one it kind of proved to myself that I, I wanted it for sure but two it kind of built up those softer skills right throughout the time and um, I built like a network of people and people knew how serious I was and like now people send me leads just because they know like I do this full time and like I I know what I'm talking about when I when I say stuff um well like I, I you're not going away you know yeah. what I mean? You can do this for the rest of your life. I mean, obviously, we have big goals when we get into real estate. We want to own real estate. We want to do some uh, special things. But it starts with the foundation. The foundation is understanding how to source opportunities, how to find deals, how to source those real estate opportunities. And, um, it, you know, you were going. And, and listen, you can take all the coaching. You can get all the mentoring. You can get all the support. You can get all the mindset you know, uh, pump up, get excited type work that you can put into your brain. But until you are knee to knee, belly to belly, face to face with an actual distressed property owner, you, you have to work off of faith. And then all of a sudden it starts chipping away and then it turns into fact. And that's when you start working, like you said, beautifully on those soft skills, because I think that's exactly what it is. It's being there. It's having that empathy. It's having that kindness. But it's also understanding that you have to go in there with certainty and confidence to, to for them to trust that you can get the job done. So was that was that tough for you, or were you just going in with you, you're just naturally a confident person? Because I would I would assume you go on appointments now, and it's just like a gunslinger, right? You're just yeah, I mean, pre qualified them. You know what's going on. I mean, how do you how do you feel on appointments? Talk to me about that. No, I mean it it it's it, it's insane because I I literally just went on an appointment the other week with another wholesaler, and I'm kind of kind of bringing him on board and stuff. And he went on the appointment, listened to my whole thing, and he was like, I was convinced. I thought you were a buyer. And, like, like uh, you're so comfortable in that. So, like, now, because I've done it so much and because I really deeply understand what wholesaling is, like, you could easily be a buyer, right? You're, you're just, at, like, yeah. You are. I mean, that's, I mean, honestly, when you go, here, here's the absolute fact, and this is for somebody that, if anybody doesn't have confidence in this, if you go in and you get a smoking hot deal, there is a line out the door of people that will joint venture with you to close that deal. They will bring money to the table for the opportunity 100%. So you should have the confidence that you are the buyer. You should be going there with the intention to buy. Every property that we go after, I have the intention to buy. Now, do I wholesale and assign 95% of them? Absolutely. Maybe 90% of them. But I, I, I feel confident closing on every single one of them because they're great opportunities. You know, once you have that confidence, and if you if you need that confidence, if you're listening to this and be like, I don't know anybody, everybody's broke around me, just go to start to go to some of the meetup groups, go to join some of the Facebook fix and flip groups, find the people that are doing business, have a conversation with them and just say, Hey, if I found a smoking hot deal, would you be my money partner? And I'm telling you, you can get four or five people like that and have all the confidence in the world, walk around like you got a million dollars in your pocket. And then all of a sudden these conversations get easier, right? One thing I tried to tell people, cause I'm, 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 actively teaching people to and like helping people that that um that are trying to get into the business as well one thing i try to tell them is the most important thing really or one of the more important things is really being able to identify value too so not just being able to like like uh source them out and stuff but being able to say that hey this is a valuable um um, um this is a valuable venture if somebody was to buy this it would actually provide value for them right and also being able to go to a seller and identify whether like is the most valuable thing for them really price or what, like can they compromise and and get something else that's even more valuable to them mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and all those things 
allow you to then go into a property after learning those things and talking to buyers and identifying how they identify value. You can go into a property now with a bunch of more cash in your pocket and know exactly what you need to um, do to lock up a deal for a good price that really is valuable, like truly is valuable. So, um, so I think that's a great part about this business and, and, um, and you guys, I mean, you guys are training us how to, how to get out there and like really create these opportunities. And you're doing it. I mean, I, we, we talked about this beforehand. Uh, you were giving me a lot, a lot of wonderful compliments. And I was saying, you do all the hard work. You do all the work. We're your guides. We've got the blueprint. We've got the plan. But you're the one that have to implement it, right? This isn't education. This is instruction. This is a step-by-step. -step. This is what you need to do to be successful as a real estate wholesaler. And then... Well, we'll get into you know the future of what your 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 big plans are in the future, but let's break down this massive deal that you got because I'm excited to learn how you found it. What what was their what what was their motivation? What was the condition? What was their timeline? Because this one popped quickly, right? So why don't we why don't we break down this uh, this deal real quick and get everybody excited? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I uh, I called them for the first time on uh, July twenty first. Straight cold call. call. Straight cold call. Straight cold call. Turned out to be his son because his father doesn't usually use his phone. It's his father's phone, but he, he doesn't use it. So his fun his son uses it. So I called. He said, "Call me back." This is literally just like any other. I I I added it to my follow up just like any other lead, right? And. Uh, what, and, what list was it on? What distressed list? So just for everybody out there, um, what we're talking about here is you want to call the distressed property lists. And there's certain different criteria for each, each one. So what list was this one on? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, they were like indicators of, of motivation. Yeah. So this particular one was a tax sale list where they have like a lot of equity, if not 100% equity. And for some reason, they're not paying for the taxes on the property. The okay. property taxes, yeah. The property taxes. And it's gotten to the point where the county is um, 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 preparing to take the property back mm -hmm. and sell it to another investor because these taxes aren't being paid. So I downloaded that list. Um, and like they say, like the best lists are the ones that you don't pay for. This one's completely free. And I just have to pay for the skip tracing. It was straight from the county. So I downloaded it. Um, I um, I cold called, cold called, cold called, and I'm talking multiple times. And then this one, he just didn't say no. He didn't say yes on the first call. We mm -hmm. also didn't say no. And I know for a fact that if nobody, if somebody doesn't want to sell their property, they will tell you no flat out. Right. And from experience. Um, and he didn't say no. He was just like, call me back. Right. And I was like, okay, what do I make of this? I kept on calling, kept on calling. I probably called him seven, seven times. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We had like a legitimate conversation about the house and about their situation. Um, and so now it's July 26th. Call them. It's at night. His father is there. So I talked to his dad and I'm like, okay, can you tell me a little bit about the house? He said there's like a water issue. There was like mold and everything. And I asked him for what his what he wanted, um, how much he was hoping to get um, for it. And he said 60 to 100 grand. Huge range. That's a big I, range. Yeah, <laughs> huge range. So I, I was like, okay, um, the next step really is um, set, setting up an appointment so I can just um, look at the condition of the house and see what we have to do. I get off of the call. I opened up the MLS. I Google searched the, I, I searched up the property and literally three doors down, a property sold 171 cash, cash. Uh huh. And they, this area is like 310, 320. Yep. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and and first, just, just real quick. So with the property tax, was there something about the property tax list that made you want to dig in deeper? You know what I mean? Or was it something that he said? Or did you pull it up as you were talking to him and you saw it looked like it was in really rough condition? I mean, what made you stay in the saddle for seven calls, just getting barely little tidbits of information, not really getting that full quality conversation? What was it that stuck out? Because I think we run across these opportunities a lot. And I think a lot of people, as they're starting out, will get rid of them early or they'll keep them for too long, but they're not really leads. So what was it about this um, this lead specifically that made you want to like go all the way through with this? 
Yeah, I mean, the the real reason is because, again, through experience and, and, and just learning different things throughout this whole time, I've, I've realized that if a seller wants to sell, you can, like, monetize it. You can, if, if they really want to sell, you can monetize it. So a lead to me is anybody that wants to sell. Yeah. Right. I can, I can sub to it. I can sell it, finance it. I can uh, wholesale it. I can send it off to a realtor. I can short sale it. I can do all these things that independent of where the mortgage balance is, we can work with it. Right. So as soon as somebody says that, if somebody says, if I ask them about their property, confirm who they are, ask them about their property, they confirm it's theirs. And they say, they don't say no. I literally just continue to call and I they're part it. of it. I love it. Well, you've got a lot of tools in your toolbox for sure. I mean, with all the different techniques that you can go after them, but uh, you're absolutely right. The most important thing there is, well, it's one of the, it's one of the four, but I think what, what you're talking about is if they want to sell the next, the next thing you want to find out is their timeline. Right. When do they want to sell? Because some people do want to sell, but they don't want to sell for a long, long, long time or they've talked about it for a long, long, long time. You need to understand, are they going to want do they want to sell in the next 30 days? Do they want to sell in the next day? Do they want to when they start telling you stuff like, hey, well, when do you want to get your money for the property? And they're like yesterday. You're like, OK, we've got something going on here. So I think it's important to ask questions if they do want to sell about their timeline. Yeah, yeah. So I ran through the four pillars um, uh, as soon as I had the, the the actual conversation with them, and I got the father on the phone. I get I got all that. I got the condition. He told me the condition was pretty bad, and so I already knew I was going on the appointment just from that. And then he said that he wanted to sell super quick. That it's been vacant for like a year, a year and a half. Um, so I knew they they weren't living in it. Uh, this is just a pain point. They haven't paid their taxes. Um, actually, the reason why it was kind of already built in. Um, to the first two points and then his price right out of the gate like this literally hit all four of the pillars and uh, I think that's why this spread was so big oh yeah I'm telling you if you get the condition of the property timeline to sell it their motivation for selling it and their price I'm telling you that is a solid appointment you show up you get that signed up so he wanted between 60 and 100 so where'd you guys land 60 and 100 so uh, I told him that we get an appointment, but uh, and then he pushed it like two weeks out, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, that this is a great deal! I need to just lock it up." So I told, I called him like a week later. I was like, "I know um, you have to go out to the, you. You're kind of disabled, and you don't want to go out to the property yourself." I just had a guy swing by. He looked into the windows, and got I, this didn't happen. But <laughs> I was like, "I just had somebody, and I think we have what we what we need. Really, it is just about getting price." Yeah, so I was like. Hey, what's the best you can do on this property? Um, that I think we're close. And he was like, okay, 75. And I I said, um, okay, okay. Um, is that the best you can do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, this this is all from you guys. Like, it's yeah. insane. Yeah. That's what he said. He said he'd take 50 grand for it. From 75, 50. <laughs> it was just even, for asking that question. Yeah, just that. Yep. I didn't even negotiate with him. I was just like, is that the best you can do? And then he said, yeah, um, 50, 50 is the least I'll take. And I was like, okay. Um, mm, okay. Let me talk to my partner. I'll, I'll, um, I'll, um, I'll call you back in 15 minutes. Is that okay? And let me just confirm that the numbers are right and we can get this done. I was literally in my seat, like dancing for like 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like 15 minutes and and uh and uh and he thinks i'm talking to my partner and all that and then i call him back and he's like yeah we have to go back and forth but um but i think we can get it done for 50 and um asked him for his email oh no so i use this from pace um i was like okay so let's say we can and and then he was like okay yeah let's uh i guess we can get so we can draft something up and i was like okay what's your email and so it's not like i'm pushing the sale yeah. um and uh, all like textbook stuff. Like this is just straight, just like using the skills that you guys teach. Um, sent him, sent him, uh, sent him an email. Um, they didn't sign until two days after, so there was some stress there. Sure. Um, he eventually signed, and um, and then I started marketing for a buyer. I had to go to the property to take pictures first because I actually hadn't been there yet. I locked it up uh, a sight and scene, mm -hmm. uh, and then marketed, marketed, marketed. Um, 
it, there was a lot of there was a lot of interest because of the price point. If you buy anything, if anything's below two hundred grand in PG County, which is where I, I market, then you're going to get a lot of interest. Um, now, because of the water in the basement, I had some pushback on the price. I put it up. I eventually, got got to buy it for one fifty, and that was like a hundred grand. <laughs> Hold on, and what did you net on this in your account? Living in your parents' bedroom, how much was wired into your bank account? Like ninety-seven five sixty-six. Ninety-seven thousand. <laughs> it's insane, man. It's one phone call. One, one phone call. call. I'm just following up, and this happened exactly oh, thirty. There was a lot of phone calls, but it initiated. From one phone call. That's what happens when you're being proactive. People are like, you can't get deals like that in this market. It's crazy. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Every day of the week. Yeah. Every day of the year. People are getting big, massive deals because they're taking action. They're being proactive. They're going, they're using these skills, and they're having these conversations, and they're getting people that originally wanted 100, down to 75, down to 50, and then got it out there and made 97 and some change. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. That's life changing. I mean, it changes your brain chemistry. It really, it allows you to understand that there is so much out there. There is so much potential. I don't know if you ever felt this way, Fade, but I used to look at these big houses and these big things and I'd be like, how do people get these things? You know, what were they doing? What did, did they invent like, you know, penicillin or something? Like what happened here, you know? And, and it's just, it's this, it is just, being of value to the community. The more value you bring to the community, the more you make. That's a, It's an easy equation. It's an equation I talk about a lot on this podcast. And you just showed that by solving these guys' problems, they could have lost it to a tax, tax sale. Let's be honest. Yeah. They could have got zero dollars. Yeah. Let's look, Everybody that thinks that they own their property free and clear is silly. We all pay rent. It's called property taxes. Okay, the government owns all the land. Let's not get it. Let's not spin this up. Okay, the government. And if you don't pay it, guess what? They take it, and you don't get anything. Okay. Yeah. So you went there. You solved their problem. You stopped an auction, a, a tax auction. You put fifty thousand dollars in their pocket. You gave this investment property to somebody that's probably what going to flip it and make another. 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars. I mean, you're the middleman of all this. This does not happen unless you pick up the phone and you make a call. I mean, that's just the facts. You are the spark of all of this. And that's why you get paid 97,000 and some change and roll it. It wasn't even the only deal that I did that month. It was like I, I did know. The what was the other one? Add it all up for the month. So so, so the other one, the, the everything was like 130. Yep. Right. Hundred and thirty thousand dollars from the bedroom. You can't even do it in the kitchen or the living room in your parents' house. You got to do it from the bedroom where you sleep every day, and you made one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Yeah. In one month. Yeah. How does that feel? It's crazy. It's crazy because, like, one of them actually came from September last year. It was a lead mm -hmm. I picked up from September last year, and it was a short sale. It was like a lot of going back and forth. And that's another thing with the perseverance thing. Like you gotta, you gotta just work it and just follow up and, and work it some more. And like, it, it just doesn't stop. But if you don't stop, then at, at some point it's gonna have to, it's gonna have to come to fruition. Like it's great. I love it. I love it. So uh, first of all, before I ask you, I've got two important questions to ask you. But the first one, uh, will you tell everybody? This isn't one of the questions. Will you tell everybody uh, how to get in contact with you to give you a you know a great job or to to give you some love or to reach out if they're in the area? How how do people get a hold of you? Of course, um, you can um, you can text me at uh, 443-329-8780, and uh, you can also follow me on Instagram. That's underscore obey o b e y fade uh, f a d a y section not to spell my name but phonetically that's how it is uh but obey fade i love it i love it okay first first question we're getting deep on it on the last couple of questions here right okay. um what makes you feel inspired or like you are your best self you know what i mean like to me 
I, I, I get inspired when I'm around people doing more than me. I get inspired around people that have good positive energy. I get inspired about going after goals that I don't think are, you know what I mean? Like what inspires you? What gives you this fire? Because we're weirdos. We're crazy people. We're wild men, right? Anybody that's in this business, I mean, it's a tiny, tiny, tiny niche of the, of the human population, but certainly here in this country, what inspires you to, to, to do this, to be a real estate entrepreneur? Now at this point in my life, because I'm so young and I don't really have responsibilities like that, the only real responsibilities I feel like I have are are my parents and just being able they're where they're they're immigrants, right? So I came over and I have conversations with them all the time, obviously, because I'm, I'm in the house with them now. Um, but uh, but I can tell like their whole adult life has really been based around kind of raising their kids and making sure that they all came out right and like now we're all doing great in our respective areas um but um but they they don't really have much outside of that so my what really inspires me is to kind of show them that there's so much more to life outside of just kind of taking care of us and and i even ask them like how much do they need if they were going to get money back there's so much there's so much more you could you could you could attain and there's so much more than because they were just like, yeah, I know. I mean, I don't have to take care of my kids anymore, so I just have to kind of cover my bills. I'm like, this is so much more. So uh, that kind of pushes me to be able to um, to really properly take care of them and and yeah. show them that they're what, like get them traveling and kind of exposing them more to um, to what life is. I mean, yeah, just from what I've seen from other people that are successful and stuff like that. So that's really what pushes me. I love it. I love it. And then what advice would you give to a smart, driven person who is starting out their wholesaling journey? What advice would you give them? Oh, my gosh. I would just say think think big and don't let anybody, like, bring you down from that, like, point. Like, think big. You're going to gonna get hit that pedestal that you put yourself on is going to get like shaken up and all that stuff but just stay on top of it regardless even if you're broke if you're working towards it you're not really broke like i i heard like a rapper say i can't remember the exact quote but like if if you're if you're trying to get it and you're broke you're not really really broke you're yeah. you're, you're just in the intermittent stage um and, and you're working towards so i would just say kind of just trust your own instincts and just keep on going because it works I love it. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being on here. What an incredible interview. I mean, just an absolute inspiration. It took you months and months and months to get it going. But then once you did, you started really doing some damage out there, really making an impact and really just uh, just being a, a, a great example in your market of somebody that's doing the business right and successfully, most important, right? Um, so I want to say thank you for being on here. You're the absolute best. I see you just, you know, blowing up and, and getting to that quarter million, half a million, million dollar business and then growing and growing and growing and growing. And it's going to be just exciting to watch and watch you buy a bunch of uh, assets and real estate and just just do it, man. So I'm really, really excited. Thank you for being on here. Um, yeah, everybody out there that is listening, if you are interested in joining the most proactive group in real estate investing, it is the TTP family. Go to wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP. That's wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP. Scroll down, check it out. If it feels good in your gut, sign up for a call. It'll either be with me or my right-hand guy. We look forward to talking to you. We love you. And uh, I encourage everybody, as always, to talk to people. Fade, say bud. You're the best. See you guys. Thank you. Bye.